Will the real day zero please stand up? <laughs> okay, my friends, day zero and welcome to it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, we can, Actually, I'm going to change my story already. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to call this officially day 0.5 because it is my last day of eating. I have completed my last meal, but tomorrow will be a soft introduction day to the fasting. And in fact, a lot of people, when they fa quote fast, they do juice fasting. The fasting that I am here at True North Health Center to do and feel I need to get the, the cleansing, detoxification, and healing from my body that I'm after uh, would be a water-only fast. But tomorrow is the final transition day, which will be juice juice fasting. So my initial transition preparation days have been in eating the type of diet that they recommend and prepare here at True North Health Center, which is plant-based, whole food, SOS free, that is free of salt, oil, and sugar. So I've been eating their food exclusively for the three days that uh, we've been here. And tomorrow is gonna be juice only. And then starting on Saturday will be my official day number one of water only fasting. And that's what I'm here to share and report on. So sorry for all the extraneous material. I'll try not to ramble, but it's been an incredible experience and I really did want to share it with you. It's so wonderful being here. It's very social. Everyone is here to get healthy. Everyone here is reaping the benefits. They all rave about it. Many people I've met have been here many times before. Some of them just come for a refresh and a reset. Most all of them, I will acknowledge that most all of them do not follow this program 100% when they're back in their real life, in their real world, in their home. And some of them are even from not very far from here at all. They come within an hour uh, to get here and some come regularly every year. Some have come many, many times. We um, uh, got acquainted with a lady today who lives uh, an hour away who comes every year and has come since before they even moved to this location. Um, but she says her downfall is that she likes to drink tea. And I said, well, gee, you know, I drink tea, but instead of putting sweetener in, I just put a little of my homemade slightly sweetened with dates, nut milk. And she said, oh no, it's not the tea. It's the cookie she has with the tea. <laughs> I said, well, I get that even more because cookies and ice cream are my downfall. So I get that. Another woman talked about how she goes on a lot of cruise ships. And she says uh, the last time that she went on the cruise ship, she just let loose and said, forget it. I'm throwing all caution to the wind. I'm not throwing, following any program. I'm going to eat all the luscious goodies that are on the cruise ship. And I actually commented that, you know, a cruise ship at the same time, it's kind of ironic because you can, you can eat a pretty clean diet on a cruise ship because they have all kinds of wonderful fruits and vegetables and um, they'll feed you that stuff. They've got nuts and grains. They have a, a, a nice clean oatmeal at breakfast and you can fill it with all the things they have here. Sunflower seeds and cinnamon and hazelnuts and shredded unsweetened coconut and raisins and, all those things are, are on this program. So uh, a lot of them aren't too far out of the norm, even for us um, with what we eat at home normally. So I, I'm, I'm quite hopeful and optimistic that I will be able to follow this program, but I can absolutely understand why so many of the people who keep coming back here aren't able to follow the program entirely when they're back in their real world. It's, let's face it, it's a hostile environment out there. It's not very supportive a culture of eating plant-based whole food, free of salt, oil, and sugar. It's just not. And you can't buy food, prepared food, that is void of those things. So um, it's just, it, it, it is a challenge to do it in our culture. And yet at the same time, it should be fairly easy. If that's all you buy, that's all you prepare, then that's all you'll eat but we are ultra social creatures. We socialize in a culture that includes food. If only we could find a way to socialize and not around food. Let's get together and just have some herbal tea. Let's get together and eat some fruit and we can still talk and play and do whatever the thing we came together to do, see a movie or entertainment or discuss things or practice our language or play our music, whatever that may be. Um, but let's just not include the the you know disease promoting foods so 
it's been a wonderful social environment already here and um, we've spoken with people who are on day 13 of their fast, day 18 of their fast, people who are here for months to come and are doing fasting and then eating and then fasting. And it's just a fascinating place to be, but it's it, they're sure trying their best. I have got to hand it to Dr. Alan Goldhammer. He is a hero. Thank you so much, Dr. Goldhammer, for devoting your life toward trying to get this message to people who just refuse to fully embrace it. And he is tirelessly working to embed this message of health promoting lifestyle into people's brains, into their culture, into their lifestyle. I gotta hand it to him. And he really works tirelessly. And for Christmas Day, he, he sent all the kitchen staff home. He did all the work in the kitchen, busting the tables, cleaning everything up, preparing and, and presenting the food. He'll sit and eat with you and then clear your plate. He's a great guy. And I really, really feel so lucky to have met him, discovered him, and to be able to come here and be part of this program at the True North Health Center. So um, what else can I say today? Um, it, it, essentially, it was just my day of last last meals. Um, I got all the blood work done and the stool samples. That was a fun one. And everything else that, that I'm doing to really take a deeper look at what's going on in my body and do what I have to do to resolve the health issues that I've been feeling. The little skin conditions, the headaches, the acne, which is the skin condition, the blo constant bloating, the ir irregular bowels, and... It, it, it's, you know, it's funny because no matter what they end up diagnosing, the answer is pretty much the same. Just fast and then eat this way. And the lifestyle is essentially the, the diet that I've been mentioning, proper, sufficient, adequate rest, i.e. good night's sleep, seven to nine hours, and daily exercise. That's my weakness. And I've not been doing it here either. I don't do it at home. But doing 20 to 30 minutes of good exercise every day. And that can just be walking, going walking around the block. It doesn't have to be at a gym or on a treadmill. It can just be walking. If you live in a multi-story home, walk up and down the stairs for 20 minutes. I love a, a, a device we got called the Cellar Sizer. It's simply a small mini trampoline. And this is something that my former neighbor, who's a physician and one of the healthiest people I know as well, jump, jump, jump up and down on the trampoline. It exercises every cell in the body because you have to really hold your form when you jump or you'll just fall off. So um, I actually did a little bit of that yesterday or today. I had one session on the cellar sizer. We actually brought our cellar sizer with us here. It's in our apartment right here in True North Health Center. And, um, and that's what he's promoting. So no matter what the ailment that they turn up in my blood or stool or urine, I think the, the treatment's gonna be pretty much the same. Fast, as long as my body will tolerate and um, still maintain health, and then just continue this health-promoting diet. Uh, that's the website here at True North Health Center, healthpromoting.com. So aptly named, so perfectly named, so well-conceived this place, and so well-implemented, and uh, again, I'm just grateful to Dr. Goldhammer and the staff here for staying the course, keeping the faith, and helping us pursue a health-promoting lifestyle for which we follow our true north, our path towards doing what is best for the body, most consistent for longevity, and then for quality of life while we're alive. And I'm committed. And at the same time, I'm, I'm going up and I'm watching my father go down. I get calls from my brother. He's in the hospital now. He's had a, uh, an infection in the toe that will not resolve itself. He had vascular surgery to open the artery and enable healing. It closed right back up and because he just keeps eating the same stuff. And he's now deliberating over whether he's gonna follow their instructions and have most of his large toe amputated so that it can heal because there's bone exposed. And we were together for dinner about a week ago and he sat there defending uh, uh, the standard American diet. And they're all oh, so-and-so lived in, a, your grandfather lived in 92. And 
you know, you can, you can defend it in any way you like. You can justify your behavior and the, the, the culture into which you're programmed as much as you like. But the fact of the matter is I myself have witnessed most everyone over 70 I know experiencing cancer, diabetes, and or heart disease, various health problems. I just watched a beautiful lecture from Dr. Michael Clapper that came from 1985. It's an old lecture and it's dated in so many ways, the materials that he uses and the articles, it's still 100% true. Well, 98% true, because he is he is talking about um, eating some of the things that they don't recommend eating here, i.e. the um, the oils, really. And then he eats bread and the, the refined carbohydrates, breads and pasta. Yes, we had a lasagna that was made with a rice noodle here uh, last night. So it's, it's a matter of just putting even more thought and being more careful and meticulous about what we eat and what's in that food and what we're putting in the body and what concentrations. But it was essentially a pro-vegetarianism lecture and an anti-meat and dairy lecture. And that's absolutely what they're promoting here as well. Uh, whether you watch Dr. Goldhammer himself or Dr. Clapper, who was a doctor here at True North for over eight years, he still checks in with them on a regular basis to talk about the patients. So it just seems so clear and so obvious and the evidence is there and the science is there that eating anything from an animal is not healthy for our body. It's just not the thing we wanna put in for a whole bunch of reasons. I'm not the doctor, I'm not the scientist, I'm not gonna lecture about that stuff. And it really made me question about what do I wanna lecture on and what's appropriate for me to speak about. And uh, I'll leave it to the experts to, to say what the experts have to say. And, and I'm a dot connector and, a, and a, a media pitch guy, so I'll pitch people like Dr. Goldhammer, watch his lectures. I'll pitch people like Dr. Clapper, watch his lectures. These guys really resonate with me as the most sense that they make of, of people who are telling you what to eat. And the, the four f basic food groups that I grew up with, dairy, meat, fruits and vegetables, and grains. And he, he put that slide up in his lecture. And essentially, that's the U.S. Department of Agriculture helping promote the meat industry to sell meat and dairy. We don't need it. It doesn't belong in our body. Everything that we think we're looking for from those foods can be gotten from foods from nature. And that um, there's so much harm that they cause. They're so fat intensive. And Dr. Clapper just has some really powerful stories about drawing blood from a patient who had eaten a, a meat heavy meal before coming to the hospital. And then the, when the blood separates, what was on the top, that's supposed to be the serum, a very clear yellowy fluid, a very thin and yellowy fluid, was just like cream, just thick, fat cream, because that's what goes into our bloodstream. And it takes a long time for the liver to process that and get it out. And that's not what our liver is designed to be doing constantly. It's gonna wear out, we're gonna have problems. And essentially I'm a guy who cares and I care about prevention and I care about you. And I hope that you will consider getting better and better information that resonates more with your heart as what is actually healthy and figure out a way to follow it. They have psychologists here. They have neuroscientists lecturing here. I went to a wonderful lecture with a woman named Heidi today who's um, going into the, the brain function of psychology and how we get in these traps, the pleasure trap and the justification trap and the denial traps. And I'm just a guy who feels I'm pretty smart and I make sense of these things. And when I hear something that resonates as very smart and the wisest wisdom to listen to, I take note of it and I, I, I sit up and I, I take notice and I listen and pay attention and I feel I'm reaping the benefits and the rewards of it. And I invite any of you watching this to do the same. So thanks so much for joining me. I'm gonna check in tomorrow, which is day 0.5 of my fast, and it will be juice only. And then Saturday, I'm really excited to stop eating all together and just drink water for five to 10 days is the plan and see how that goes. And I know that's the, the nitty gritty, juicy detail report that you're looking for is, okay, when you stop eating and you're just drinking water, how does that go? How does that work out? How does that feel? And I'm looking forward to sharing those experiences. And um, that's all I can really do. I'm not the expert on any of this. 
I'm, I'm just a, a guy looking for better answers, better health, and to not end up like the elders around me who are so sick and who've died so prematurely. I'll remind you of my mother who died at 76 years old. Some may think that's a nice ripe old age and a, and a good long life. And I don't feel that way myself. I feel that we can do better, we can live longer, and we can be healthier. She was extremely sick. I don't wanna be extremely sick. Do you? Thank you.